Hey, what's up guys? My name is YDO Day. Today I'll be bringing you a World Chalice Kaiju deck profile. Let's get right into it. Okay guys, let's get right into the first card here. For the first card of the deck, we do have World Legacy, World Chalice. Not only does this card have a little bit of a lockdown effect, but also has another effect allowing you to add more monsters from your deck to your field, special summoning, and extending your plays. It also has a graveyard effect where you can search either another one of World Legacy World Chalice or a World Legacy Heart to recycle a few of your already dead materials. Okay guys, next up we do have the Stratos of the deck. Every single deck has to have their Stratos. Most of the time, their Stratos is not always a monster, but there's always a single search card or one card that searches out all of your monsters, and that's what Lee is. But not only does Lee have a search effect, it's also got a graveyard effect where you can send a monster from your hand or field to grave and add her back to hand, meaning if you can send her from your deck to your grave, you can basically search her by adding her back to your hand if you have a monster on your field or in your hand. Okay, next up guys, we have a World Chalice archetype base uh, hand trap, and it doesn't only have a hand trap effect, but he's also got a graveyard effect to banish himself and spell summon a vanilla from your graveyard. Also, this is my favorite card in the deck. Okay guys, next up for the ratios of vanillas, we just run triple chosen. Now chosen is a, not only is chosen a target for e Telly, but if you want to, you can run a Levier and special summon back your World, World Chalice Guard Dragons, which is a combo I've seen people do, and you can add it back to hand with Firewall later on. Okay guys, now that we're done with the World Chalice names, we're going to get into a few of the monster spammy cards that aren't actually in the World Chalice archetype. Starting off, we do have our buddy here, Gofu, the Black Shadow, the <laughs> Black Wing Gofu, the Vague Shadow. I got that name wrong there. <laughs> Not only does Gofu surpass your normal summon by special summoning itself if you control no monsters, but he also special summons two tokens onto the field, which can be used to special summon a Link Spider or a Proxy Dragon, or you can use him for a Proxy Dragon. You can also use him in Chosen to go into a level 8 Synchro, but that's not really recommended. Okay, next up, guys, we have Gofu on Crack, a.k.a. Agent of Creation Venus. Venus is searchable by transmodifying a level 2 Light Fairy, which the mystical shine balls that you summon with Venus are, well, level 2 Light Fairies, and so is Lee, the World, World Chalice Lee, so that you can search her, and then you can add the Lee back to hand with Lee's own effect. Venus has a basic effect where you can basically special summon each myst or as many mystical sign balls as you want, except you can only run three of the same card in a deck. You pay 500 life points for each mystical sign ball you do summon, and you get a lot of vanilla. You can go into M Duke and extend your plays to the maximum extendability. Okay, next up, guys. Just using three mystical sign balls, although that is good, getting you four monsters out in the field, you can extend that even further by shuffling them all back into the deck and special something all back out again for another 1,500 life points. With an overall cost of 3,000, it's actually very worth it since these, just a Venus and a Exodus in hand alone can get you very big fields just to start out. And to finish off the three and two of the non-archetype, we do have a Effect Veiler, although this isn't really a monster spammy card. Effect Veiler is kind of a budgetish or, yeah, budgetish proxy version of Ghost Ogre. I have my Ghost Ogres coming in. I recommend playing Ghost Ogre for the next meta, but Effect Veiler is a sufficient proxy until we do, until you do get your own Ghost Ogres. Okay guys, I'm just gonna finish this up with the one of the deck. We have a one of Rescue Rabbit. I don't really like this card, but I still run it because it has some usefulness. But this this is the you only act you only use this card if this is the only card in your hand that you can use. We also have an Arch Lord Krista because Krista can lock your opponent out of special summoning. This is insanely good for the mirror match and is also good against other decks that heavily depend on special summoning, including Palozoic. Especially Spirals. If you can get this card out, you may just have like the best out to Spirals as long as you can keep this card alive using World Child's Guard Dragon or Eeb. Okay, for the fodder, sort of fodder for Brilliant Fusion, we have our Gym Knight engine, which is basically one vanilla Gym Knight of any Gym Knight since Garnet isn't really meta anymore. Don't spend 10 bucks or 5 bucks on a vanilla that you're going to send to Graveyard and that's all it's going to do or you're going to brick on it. Now, there is a better alternative, which is Obsidian, where I think that the best ratio for this deck would be one Obsidian, one Lazuli. Although Obsidian does special summon, 
having it having the other world chalice in your hand does get you a little bit more access in choosing where you want to summon it later on in the combos because i i've had some neon gear suit plays where i'm going to use a monster a world chalice monster in the three zones that your your um your neon gear suit points to and uh, you can summon back out your vanilla so i just feel like it's a better play in some occasions okay guys next up we do have the main engine of this profile and that is going to have to be our Kamungus the Sticky String Kaiju, which Gamma Seal is a more meta version, but I actually feel like Kamungus is a better card for lockdown since it's obviously a lot cheaper for budget players. Although Gamma Seal has a much better effect, you can actually misplay with Gamma Seal since your opponent's probably going to try to target the Gamma Seal and kill that first. Although they may think of Kamungus as not as much of a threat, your Kamungus. It, it's just, it's mind games, really. You're telling your opponent you can't afford a game seal, and they may not I expect this card to be as good as it really is, because you can remove two counters. If your opponent normal special summons a monster, you can negate its effects, basically meaning you can, if they have a starter, you can negate that starter. If they have another starter, you can negate that one as well. Of course, to search the kaiju, we need our triple water front, and to search our water front, we need our single terraform. We go from one to three to one. It's pretty funny. But... That is their basic mini kaiju engine. You can run multiple kaijus of your choice, or whatever you're comfortable with. Now, I currently don't have any firewalls, but firewall would be an amazing choice, especially since it can special summon the kaijus from your hand rather than from your graveyard using Aurum. Okay, next up, guys, we have a sort of search for Lee. This can also be a one and a half card or a one card starter or one card huge link monster combo where you can use Brilliant Fusion to send your Lee to grave. You can send one monster from your hand to grave. Use, uh, with your double norm summon, use Lee, search World Legacy, World Chalice, and then go on from there. You can tribute summon again using Seraph Knight, use those two for Orum, special summon two from your deck. It's basically a one card combo, or one and a half card combo, currently for insane link plays, and it's a pretty good card for the archetype, especially since it does search your Lee, but it can also add monsters back to hand using Lazuli, or special summon from the grave if you do run Obsidian. Okay, next up, guys, we know we always brick on those shine balls sometimes, and so that, that doesn't happen all the time, we run double trans modify. Trans modify doesn't only turn your shine balls into a Venus, but it can also turn your Lees into a Venus, which is an amazing effect, especially for this kind of deck. Next up, guys, we do have a few of the one ofs. I'm just going to put these down real quick. We have E Telly to special summon our chosen. We have Soul Charge to spam the field. We have World Legacy's Heart as a secondary search for World Legacy World Chalice and a pretty good recycler card. And then we have Foolish Burial. Foolish Burial doesn't only allow you to send to Graveyard your Lee, but also basically any monster from your deck to special summon back with Aurum. You can also use this to search hand traps if you do have Firewall, because you can send any hand trap from your deck to your Graveyard and Firewall it back to your hand. That's actually a pretty good combo you can do to search your, your uh, Ghost Ogre, since Ghost Ogre is light type, I'm pretty sure. I'm not sure, but we'll we'll see that later. You can also summon uh, Ghost Ogre with e Telly, send it to Gray for a combo, and add it back to hand with Firewall, giving you a lot of hand trap to your hand, of course, with also your Kaiju Engine and your Archer Krista for a pretty sufficient lockdown. Okay, guys, so we're going to go into the traps, but I just want to emphasize this real quick. I do have a video on my channel, which is called Lockdown Build, and there's not a lot of changes from this build and that one. Other than this is more kaiju summoning focused because the other one did have the kaiju engine in it. This engine is much more kaiju focused, and or this deck is much more kaiju focused than the last one since kaijus, uh, kaijus are a really powerful lockdown card or a lockdown engine in this deck. But to get into the traps, we do have double solemn strike. Solemn strike, another pretty good lockdown card. This card recently got reprinted in the Ma not Maximum Crisis, Code of the Duel of Special Edition, so I recommend picking these up now since it's a pretty good investment, since they're certainly going to go up later on whenever people can't find their Solemn Strikes, and they're going to need to buy more. Okay, guys, that's it for the main deck. I'm pretty sure that's at 40 cards. I need to recheck. Maybe if you could, someone count, see in the comments. But, yeah, let's get into the extra deck. So right off the bat, we have our main extra deck monster, Ningirsu. Ningirsu has an amazing draw effect where you can draw mon draw cards equal to the number of World Chalice monsters this card points to. And if you do summon it under a Link Zone, that's a possibility of three, so you can draw three. But not only that, it also has another effect. You can send one card from each player's field to the graveyard. That's an amazing effect, especially since you can send a dead Brilliant Fusion, since Brill Brilliant Fusion does become dead after you do Tribute or use the Seraph Knight for Link Summon. So it's basically a dead card on the field or fodder for 
Ninja Shoes effect. Okay, guys, for the rest of the extra deck, I think I'm just going to place these down. We have Aurum, main card of the deck. She also summons your Kaijus from the graveyard after you send them with Lee. We also have Triple Eve. Eve is an amazing card for protecting your monsters. It is also more generic than other World Chalice monsters because you can use just two monsters with different types and attributes. You can use a vanilla to go into Link Spider. And if that vanilla is not a insect, I think, Cybers, <laughs> Cybers Earth, then you can go into an Eve, giving you another World Chalice name. And last up, we do have Imduke. Imduke, not only does Imduke give you an extra normal summon, but it also has the float effect, as all of the World Chalice monsters have a float effect, where if they're sent to the graveyard, you're supposed to summon one World Chalice monster from your hand. Uh, do beware, guys. Imduke is a upward-pointing Link monster, and you can easily misplay by locking yourself out of Link zones by starting off with Imduke. But some, most of the time, if you have a World Chalice monster in your hand, it's perfectly okay to go into Imduke. Okay, guys, for the main boss monster of the deck, we do have Top Logic Bomber Dragon, since... Most of our plays are going to end with a Kaiju or a Krista on one side with some Kaiju counters on the field and a Top Logic Bomber on the other side of an Eve, a few, along with some hand traps in hand or some set traps. That's most of our infields most of the time, giving us a sufficient lockdown to completely destroy our opponent. Next up, we have a card that's not very useful currently until I get a Firewall, but that is Guy Saber. Uh, I may update this for Time Wizard, which is a new card coming out that's a really lockdown, or not Time Wizard, I forgot, Cyber's Time Wizard, I don't know, it's a new Link Monster, or Tri Wizard, something like that, and this is, a, a Tri Wizard can negate spells and traps and monsters, it's an amazing lockdown card, and it's a better alternative than Gaia Saber, but Gaia Saber is deficient for now, he's also good for extra links, if you do want to, for an extra link, if you do want to play that kind of build. Okay guys, next up we have another fully generic Link monster, and that's Proxy Dragon. Proxy Dragon is amazing for this deck. It gives you an easy extra link, but not only does it give you an easy extra link, it also has an effect to protect all monsters, or any if any monster you control will be destroyed, you can use Proxy Dragon to destroy it. An, a monster it points to. Now do beware, this cannot negate field wipes, but Eve can negate field wipes in a way. It doesn't negate the field wipe, but it protects one of, or it protects the monsters it points to. Especially if you have an Eve lock, you can discard both. Not discard, send to graveyard both of them, and then their float effect replaces themselves. Really, there's not much of a setback, although this is more of a combo extender rather than it is an infield card, so if this is in your field in the infield, just try to get rid of it by maybe going into a top logic bomber dragon. Okay, next up, guys, we have another very powerful generic monster, and that is Link Spider. Link Spider, you can use any vanilla, and you can use a token. I forgot to mention this. Imduke cannot, you can't use a token to summon Imduke. But Link Spider also has a really amazing effect. You're supposed to summon a vanilla from your hand, see the Link Zone it points to, unbricking your Chosens. And then you can basically go into some other combos by maybe going to Imduke there, using the Chosen, and normal summon another one of your World Chalice monsters. Preferably World Legacy World Chalice and Tribute to Link Spider. Also, Link Spider is helping you use Venus sufficiently in the deck since Venus is kind of hard to get all those vanillas into World Chalice monsters. So you can Link Spider up top, Imduke up bottom, then you can Eve up top with the Link Spider and the, the other thing, then go into some more combos and float two monsters out of your hand and just extend your plays from there. Okay, guys, for the last card in the extra deck, we do have our Seraph Knight for our Brilliant Fusion plays. Okay, guys, thank you for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Now, don't forget to tell me in the comments if you did enjoy the video. And if you did make it this far in the video, please go tell me in the comments. Just type in bamboozled. A little funny thing. I don't really care. But if you did use this deck to maybe win or top in an event, please tell me in the comments below if any changes you did to the build so I can better my build for other people watching my videos. Because not only do I want my videos to appeal to a more budget casual player, but I also want it to appeal to people who are trying to win tournaments as a budget player as well. If you're not a budget player, it's not that hard to just buy two firewalls and put them in the extra deck by dropping a Link Spider, since that extra deck was 14 cards, you keep that in mind. But this deck is kind of just a... I forgot, what does Team Samurai say? Whatever, it's, it's like a outline you you basically build your deck based on my ideas it, building an exact build like mine although it may work it may be a little bit inconsistent because of there's no firewalls and firewalls basically your main extender meaning if you have to use least effect to add it to hand you actually can't go into any of your lockdown monsters 
So do beware when playing this deck competitively. Learn how to play it first. It's a little bit harder to learn, but it's still as efficient and sufficient and meta relevant as a deck with Fireball, which is why I wanted to bring this video to you guys. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.